In this video, we'll be discussing the important topics of second module. So if you have not watched my previous video, I have explained all the important questions module wise. So this will be an extension to that. I'll be discussing the answers here or the important topics of second module. So the first topic here is uh, we'll start with the definitions. So tuple, tuple refers to all the rows present in the relation. What is the relation? Relation is combination of rows and columns. That is the table. And what is attribute? Attribute is the column header. Suppose this is a table. So these are the attributes, right? These are the attributes which define the entities. The role played by some domain D in schema R is represented by DOM of A to uh, AI. Okay, so this is attribute. Now understanding what domain is. Domain is set of atomic values or set of permitted values for one or more attributes. Like for name, the domain is set that it has to be a character value, not it. it Name can't be length, right? Name can't be integer. So the domain for name is set of strings of character of specific length. And contact number is number of, uh, it is uh, uh, length, like number, right? Integer. So it is length. So student has name and contact and domain of these are specified. So that was about domain. Next we have tuple. So mapping from attribute uh, to values in order to describe some entity. So name, you're mapping it to Smith. And gender, you're ma mapping it to male. Okay. So person is that particular uh, attribute and that attribute has these values. So mapping those values is tuple. Okay. Then we have relational schema. So relational schema is used to describe a relation. It is made up of a relation name R and a list of attributes A1, A2, A3 and so on. So you can write it as C. Student is a relation and name, role number, age, gender are the attributes. So for these attributes, there are uh, certain constraints and the data type is specified. Like for name, it has to be string, string a la worker. Role number, it has to be integer, age, uh, character. Uh, age is integer again. Grade, grade is also integer again. So degree of relation. Degree of relation is number of attributes present in the uh, relation. So here for student relation, we have four attributes, right? One, two, three, four. So it is four. And cardinality. Cardinality says the total number of tuples, number of rows. One, two, three, four. If I have four rows here, then cardinality is four here. Next, we have uh, characteristics of a relation. So there are uh, four characteristics of relation mainly. So the first one is ordering of tuple in a relation. So a relation is equal to set of tuples. So, hence it has no order associated with them. So, when relation is depicted as stable, tuples are necessarily listed in some order because while storing in storage, order has to be followed or it becomes advantageous for uh, performing for from the pers performance perspective. So, uh, you need to order the tuples and store it in the relation because uh, when you're retrieving the data, when you're retrieving the values of tuple, it will be easy. So that's why uh, ordering is pretty important in tuples. So that was the first characteristic, so, uh, characteristic of relation. Next we have ordering of attributes. Not only the tuples, even attributes need, uh, need to be ordered in specific value because uh, mapping from its attributes to corresponding values. So order in which attributes are listed in tuple is irrelevant. So ordering of uh, attributes is necessary. Then we have value of attributes. So for a relation to be one NF, it has to be atomic. We know that. So if there is a null value used when value not known or not applicable or not available. So the definition of null value, we have seen it in the previous module, right? The previous modules. So it is not applicable. So in the atomic condition, we need not consider uh, null values. Okay. That's what it is. Then we have interpretation of relation. So each relation can be viewed as predicate and each tuple as an assertion for which predicate is obeyed. So this is slight confusing but then in general terms we can say that only facts are taken as tuples and they are uh, depicted so relation comprises of tuples and tuples are the facts so the relation is predicate and each tuple has assertion for which predicate is obeyed so depending on those facts only the assertions would be made out right so that is what interpretation of relation refers to then we have constraints so constraints are the rules or uh, restrictions which are derived from the mini world. So we take some relevant data from the mini world and then set up some constraints. So there are three categories in it. First one is inherent, 
or implicit second one is schema and the third one is application inherent constraints are those constraints which are uh, inherent from the relation that is no two relation no two tuples in a relation can be duplicates can have same value so these values are inherent or implicit inbuilt in the while while defining the while defining the relation those are inherent constraints then we have schema constraints those are directly expressed in the schema using data definition language for example referential integrity constraint or domain constraint all those are schema constraints those constraints which cannot be directly expressed in schema are uh, can be expressed by using the application program so that is application constraints so here application constraints are like when you are defining a particular uh, relation when you are entering the tuples uh, you set up uh, certain conditions right that is salary suppose let's take an example salary of hod should be always greater than salary of teacher so this is a condition a constraint which you are setting for that particular schema then we have domain constraints so what is a domain constraint with each tuple value of each attribute a must be atomic so domain constraint says that value of each attribute must be atomic and uh, domain constraint performs data uh, data type check for example in ah column value should be integer only so that is what domain constraint first first is the attribute should be atomic and then the second operation is it perform, it it checks the data type of the uh, tuple if the if the row if the tuple is not of proper data type then it has to be changed okay that's what domain constraint says then we have key constraint so key constraint says that all tuples must be unique first point and there should be that is same no no same tuple should be there and key constraints are usually mini world uh, usually mini world also says the same right that is uh, it has to be unique tuples have to be unique and along with that it is a minimal super key so along with that we'll look into the definition of key key is an attribute by which we can uniquely identify an relation so this was about key next we'll look into super key so super key is no two tuples should have same value every relation has at least one super key super key is set of attributes then we have candidate key so set of attributes that uniquely identify the tuple in a relation are called candidate key and the primary key is among those candidate key you select one tuple which uniquely identifies the relation that is called primary key and then null values so we make use of constraints to specify that an attribute can have null value or not so that is null values then we have a entity integrity constraint that is no primary key value can be null first point because by primary key definition it states that uh, we are making use of it to uniquely identify that relation so if primary key is zero that makes no sense we cannot uh, identify that relation right so that's what entity integrity says then we have key constraints and entity integrity constraint so they are specified on individual relations okay then we have referential integrity constraint that is uh, specified between two tuples so they are used to maintain consistency between two tuples in two relations so referential integrity if you see you should write about foreign key so foreign key is a tuple in relation 1 that refers to another relation 2 must refer to existing tuple in that relation so that is what foreign key says right so you have two tables here so you make use of one uh, key to uniquely identify the other uh, other table right one attribute to uniquely identify the other attribute that is called as uh, foreign key so this was about referential integrity constraint um, do look into do look into the pdf because there they have specified in detail so that will help you out do look into that or uh, pdf because they have specified it, it in detail there so that will help you out to elaborate it and write it properly in the exam then we have semantic integrity constraint so we set business rules or logics of an organization within the application program like we have seen for application program here that is um while setting the relation you are setting uh, while while defining a relation you are setting certain constraints so this is also the same that is salary of hod should be greater than salary of teacher so sql has techniques Uh, that is triggers or assertion to enforce semantic integrity constraint so we make use of triggers or assertions to define the semantic integrity constraint so this was about it next we have um functional dependency constraint so it establishes relation between set of attributes we have seen what functional dependencies are right in the fourth module so do refer that video i have explained about functional dependency so this constraint is used to analyze and improve quality of relations then we have uh, the constraints topic is done here 
Now we'll look into the operations. First we have insert operation. So list of attribute values for new tuple t can be inserted into a, uh, a relation r. So we need to look into the syntax. Insert into table name, columns, value and value names. This was for insert. Then for delete, to delete a particular value or set of tuples where uh, a condition is specified. So for, the, for that syntax is delete from table name where condition is specified. Then we have update. So in update, we modify the attribute value of one or more selected rows. So in that syntax is update table name set update set where set is new changes in the column where is the condition you are specifying. So in insert delete and update uh, if violations can happen if syntax is not followed properly. So we have seen the constraints right. So in, in insert uh, if column one is of integer type and while entering the value if in the val uh, value one if you enter uh, if you enter a character there would be a violation right. So uh, you, you should write what violation it is and uh, do refer the notes um, violations are clearly specified there for integer there are three to four violations for delete there are three violations for update there are two or three violations so do give it a look then we have group by clause so each relation um, each relation in which there is no overlapping is happening we, we can group them into subgroups of tuples so each group consists of tuples that have same value of same attributes that's where we make use of group by clause. By using this, we are grouping the attributes in which we can easily access the data. So that is select D number average salary from employee group by department number. So here, whatever the output is that we are grouping it by department number. So this was about group by clause. Um, then we have where clause and having clause. So where can be used other than select, where can be used in um, other statements than select statement also but then having is restricted to only select statement where applies to each and every row whereas uh, having applies to summarized rows where uh, the data is fetched from memory according to the condition here the data is fetched first and then um, separated according to the condition so this is used before group by this is used after group by then we we'll look into the clauses of SQL retrieval query so retrieval query in SQL comprises of six clauses first one is select which is used to list uh, um, list the values or attributes we need to retrieve. Then we have from, from specifies the relations or the attributes from which the you are taking the values. Then we have where, where specifies the condition. Then we have group by, we have seen condition on which grouping is done. Like there are inbuilt aggregate functions, min, count, average, max, sum. We have seen this in uh, third module, right? So those are set of group by conditions, okay? Then we have having. So sub-specification condition of group by. Then we have order by. Order by is to specify order for which uh, for which we are displaying the data for given query. So this was about clauses of SQL retrieval. We look into the relation set of tables. That is without constraints. So firstly relation set like entity set is mapped to a relation considering relation set without key and participation constraints. So assuming that we have not specified uh, the constraints here. So we will we'll look into how the relation is. Uh, established or explained here. So to rep represent a relation, each participating entity is identified first and then values are specified to it to the descriptive attributes of relationship. Thus, the attributes include firstly define the primary key and then we define the foreign key and then descriptive attributes of uh, relationship sets are established. So the set of non-descriptive attributes is super key for the relation. If there are no key constraints, the set of attributes is candidate key. So here um, it basically means that in an entity set, you are, uh, there are no constraints. You are not defining any constraints. In that condition, you can make use of all the attributes to uniquely identify it, right? So that is what, in that condition, they all fall under candidate key. So in from candidate key, we'll be selecting one primary key and one foreign key. This was about relationship sets to a tables without constraints. We'll look into with constraints condition. So if the constraints are specified, then it becomes very easy, right? Firstly, we set one primary key from N entity sets and M candidate keys. So from M candidate keys, primary key would be established and then foreign key would be established, adding foreign keys. After foreign keys are established, in the end, we write the condition here. We write the constraints that is on delete or on update, either it has to roll back or cascade. So these conditions are further specified by using key constraints. So this was about relation sets to the tables with key constraints. Now we'll look into uh, the steps to convert a ER model to the relationship uh, relational mapping. Okay, so this could be 
asked this is an important question so this is the er diagram which we have okay so our first step is to map regular entities regular entity types so if you look at the er diagram uh, there are certain regular entities right like uh, like we have employee here then we have department here dependent here project here employee department and project would be written first because these are regular entities i'll explain you why de dependency is not considered or dependent is not considered so employee in employee we have uh, first name middle name and last name sex b date salary address and ssn after mapping the regular entities you are specifying the ssn ss you are specifying the key constraints here so ssn is used to uniquely identify uh, this particular relation this particular entity right so that is ssn that is the primary key here then we have department in department we have name location and number so department number can be uniquely identified okay so this is primary key then we have project so in project we have name number location p name p number and p location here p number can be uh, written as primary key because it helps to uniquely identify project then that is what first step says here uh, it's all theory then second step is mapping of weak entities so so if you see uh, we have uh, we have we have explained dependency by using in uh, two um, diamond boxes right so this states that uh, there is weak entity here that is dependency dependent does not have unique primary there uh, its own primary key here because the values need to be derived from the employee that is why it is considered as a weak entity so we will be defining the weak entity here so dependent has name name is being uh, dependent name is being taken from the ssn and then we have essn that is ssn of department name is taken from the employee firstly and then essn is taken from the employee ssn and then sex b date and relationship are explained uh, as it is then we have uh, next step is mapping the next step is we'll write down uh, for work works for entity works for we have sal works for we have essn and then p number p number is taken from project and essn is taken from employee so this is uh, again uh, dependent on the other the, the, the other two entities then we have department location here location is marked with two vowels that is weak entity weak attribute so department location has department number and department location these two are further taken from project and department so we are done with first step and second step that is to map the regular entities and then second step was to map the weak entities next our third step is to map mapping of binary one is to one relation and then fourth step is fourth step is to map one is to n relation and then fifth step is to map m is to n relation and then sixth step is to map multi valued attributes so we'll quickly look into the theory part so in mapping of binary one is to one relation we identify the relation corresponding to to the entity type participating in one is to one relation we choose uh, one relation here specific uh, preferably total part that can be specified by two lines and then we include a primary key as well as a foreign key so firstly you uh, choose one relation and in which firstly you will take one foreign key and then here it would be primary key after that include all simple attributes of one is to one type so one is to one relationship is established in one is to one relationship uh, type you identify the relation participating in entity type at n side of relation firstly look at the n side part and then one primary key would be there one foreign key would be there and then you include simple attributes of one is to n type one is to n type is specified here this was about one is to n relationship then we have m is to n relation so in this uh, you create a new relation to represent m is to n type and then you include primary key foreign key and then you include any sp uh, simple attribute of m is to n relation and then here you make use of spe uh, spe uh, specific you specify the referential triggered actions that is on cascade uh, that is cascade on foreign key for both update and delete now we look into the multi valued attributes so you create a new relation for multi valued include primary key foreign key include any simple component and then specify referential triggered actions so for all the steps you'll uh, uh, you'll consider the relation first you'll consider the relation firstly and then you'll specify the foreign key uh, primary key and then you'll choose certain attributes to depict uh, the one is to one one is to n m is to n or multi valued uh, relations and then fourth step in m is to n and multi valued you specify the triggered actions so that's it that, that's it in the next ma mapping of n array relationships
you create new relation of n array relationship include primary key foreign key any other simple attribute so uh, theory part I, I hope you can write it but then explaining it with an example it depends on the marks if this is asked for eight marks then you should make use of a simple er model and then um, write the schema here and then specify the schema here i hope you can uh, draw the relations here super ssn is dependent on ssn and uh, d number is dependent on d number here all this can be done easily so uh, all the notes would be uh, uploaded in the g drive that will be uh, the link is available in the comments and in the description so next we'll uh, look into the most important uh, part of this module that is queries so we'll be solving three queries here we'll be looking into three queries here so the first query is uh, so the first problem is we have student faculty course and enroll so the first problem is to retrieve name of all students enrolled for course uh, cs54 so while writing queries um, see one good thing about uh, our subject this exam is that uh, you won't uh, we won't have to run the program right we won't have to run the queries so if you run the queries uh, it may it may be uh, identify it may be identified by the evaluator that the program is not right but then while writing the theory part um, you can write anything but then make sure that uh, it looks proper it looks proper okay so starting from the first query we'll write the answers for it so we need to select name of all students so select name of all students students name is specified in student so s dot student s dot name um, from s dot name from student s this is aliasing so instead of writing student dot name here i am taking short form s student s s enrolled for course course uh, course name is specified in course then we'll take course c here and then we'll take enroll e select is done from is done now i'll write where part where see firstly the cid and cid here should be the same so i'll write c dot cid is equal to e dot cid and the usn of enrolled student and the student here should be same so s dot usn is equal to e dot usn so i'm done matching these two and these two next i need to take c dot c name is equal to cs54 close the bracket okay bracket is not there here put a semicolon that's it this is the first answer second is list all department having average salary about about 10000 so you need to specify the departments here select department you are taking department from faculty right from faculty where average salary should be greater than 1000 sorry 10,000 and we need to group by department here so this was second uh, query and the third one list name of students enrolled for course uh, CS54 and having B grade so it is the same as the first query I'll write it as it is select part I'll write S dot name from student S course C enrolls e where firstly the ids should match next the usn should match next the course name should be cs54 and then we have b grade here grade is an enroll right so enroll is e dot grade is equal to what, what, what the grade should be B here so I'll write B here so this was about the uh, all the three queries so I would suggest you to practice the queries once uh, from the pre I have taken these questions from previous year uh, papers only but then um, do look into uh, our uh, lab programs once because uh, the syntax and all you'll get to know so we'll look into the second problem that is uh, employee uh, the employee database is specified here employee department department location project works on and dependent so here i'll take for every project located in staff word list project number controlling department and department managers last name address and date of birth and birth date so 
project number controlling department uh, project uh, project number i have selected and then controlling department number d dot d num and then uh, last name and then address and then birth date is selected from project p department d and employee e, where you need to establish uh, you need to uh, select only those uh, projects which have look uh, uh, project located in stafford right so first p dot p location would be stafford first condition is done and then in project and department what do we have common we have dnum and dnum here so they have to be common and then in employee and department uh, their d number should be sorry in employee and department manager assistant should be common because we are selecting the manager id here d dot manager assistant should be equal to e dot assistant because uh, manager is also an employee so in department that employee is being considered as manager manager but then in an employee table he is just a normal employee okay so that was about first query second we have list names of all employees who have a dependent with same first name as themselves this is easy so you will select the first name last name from employee table and then you will consider dependent table where essn essn should be equal to ssn here firstly that's when the uh, that's when the dependents are same like uh, that's when uh, that these dependents are for this particular employee will understand right so d dot essn should be e dot essn i have written it here and then first name should be same as themselves so dependent name should be equal to e dot first name dependent name should be equal to e dot first name i have specified here this was about second query third query is for each project list project name project name is in project so p dot project project name is in uh, project name is in project right so p dot p name sum sum of w dot r because total r need to be considered from project p uh, works on w where project number here and works on these two project numbers should be same and we are grouping it by project name so this is third query coming to fourth query we have uh, retrieve name of employee each employee who works on all projects controlled by research department so you need to select employee name first f name l name from employee done where here condition is being specified that is not exists so if this goes false all this would be true okay that, that's what not exist refers to firstly you will select project number from project p department where department name should be research so you are selecting all the projects which fall under research department okay that is about this this part of query that is to select all projects controlled by research department minus you are selecting a employee who works on all the projects that is select w dot project number from works on where employee dot assistant is w dot assistant so you are subtracting the common employee okay so this was about this nested query next we have uh, the last query uh, last problem here that is works lives and located in this is easy one we have uh, list name of people who work for company flipro along with cities they live in so firstly we need to select works for works for right people who work for so people name w dot p name and then i'll take l dot city lives lives in the city and then i'll write from works w lives l from works w lives l where the um, p name p name here both should be same so w dot p name is equal to l dot p name and the company name should be company here is c name right so w dot c name should be is equal to flipro so this was about first query second we have find name of person who doesn't work for infosys so select w dot p name from works w where company name so w dot c name is not equal to infosys this was also easy query then third we have to uh, people whose salaries are more than oracle employees so select w dot people that is p name from works w where salary should be greater than nested uh, query l right select um, 
select maximum salary your maximum salary is said right salary is more than uh, oracle company so i'll select maximum salary of employee who works in oracle okay so this would work here i am selecting employee who works in oracle and then compare to this the salary of the other employees who have greater salary would be selected name their names would be selected then fourth query i have person who works and lives in the same city so select w dot p name person name from works w lives l located in li where so the person lives and works in the same city so i can write i can write w dot um, firstly the name should be same right w dot p name is equal to l dot p name first is done and i'll write w dot company name should be equal to li dot company name this is also done and then i'll write the city which they are residing in so l dot city should be same as li dot city l dot city should be same as li dot city so by writing this we can find out a person who who works and lives in the same city so this was about these are this was about the fourth problem now we we'll look into the relational algebra part so for the theory uh, i would suggest you to go through niso academy videos so they have uploaded a detailed playlist explaining the relational algebra topics so even i learned from those videos only so we'll look into the relational algebra queries so in second module uh, they have two options either they can ask the normal sql queries or they can ask the relational algebra queries so if they give condition if they give choice between the, these two it could be asked for 8 marks so i would suggest you to write the sql queries because we have studied for lab and we know the basics here but then relational algebra is uh, i won't say it's difficult but then it's it's a new topic to us right so it's slightly confusing so let's start solving this here so firstly find movies made by hansen after 1997 hansen is the director name and 1997 is the my m year so i need to select movies made by so select movies from the movies i need to select uh here i'll write movie year is greater than 1997 and uh the director name should be and sun so this is uh for selecting the entire row which has movie for 1997 and director as hansen so if they have specified only movie name then i could have uh, made made use of the project operator here but then they have not specified movie name here right so i'll leave it as it is next coming to the second query we have find name of all actors and directors so i can write i need to select actor from actors union i need to select director from director so second one was was also pretty easy third one i have find uh, this director's movie with this actor so i can write uh, I, i'll split it into two parts firstly i'll select the movie title okay so firstly i'll select the movie title which has actor as this mac door from the actors table and then i'll select the title of director cons from the director table and next i'll combine uh, find the intersection of these two in order to get the uh, one um, in order to get the common one in which the mo the movie is directed by con and the actor is mick dormant in the fourth part i need to select director actor pairs 
where the director is younger than the actor so director d age actor age so i need to select the director and the actor where director d should be greater than actors age so this was about fourth query so um i have covered only one problem here because uh, in niso academy uh, playlist they have solved several problems so go through that so this was about second module i would say that in second module eight marks would be for the sql query or the relational algebra query followed by that they could ask uh, they can ask uh, 10 marks or 2 marks or it could be 6 6 or anything so depending uh, first make sure that you are thorough you 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 are thorough with these 12 marks and then look into this option so whichever uh, whichever question uh, you feel that you can easily score marks look into that coming to the first module so there are a set of uh, er diagrams so the common ones like employee table employee database and then the college database and then the airlines database so i would suggest you to go through these because uh, again these could be asked for 8 to 10 marks so whichever is easy opt that question coming to third module third module i have discussed all the topics in the video so that's it fourth module um, i forgot to tell you about uh, 4nf 5nf and problems based on the normalization so they they can give us a table and then they'll ask uh, which normal form is it is a, which normal form it is in and then next step would be to deduce it to a particular normal form uh, like in previous year papers have seen they have asked to deduce the deduce the given data given tables into 3nf or 4nf okay so that was about third module and fifth module also i have covered most of the important topics so uh, if you find my video as helpful do subscribe it and do share it with your friends and all the best for your exam and stay tuned thank you